Thank you for joining us in this DDI CADcast. My name is Cody Armstrong, and the topic today is What's New 2014? SOLIDWORKS Fundamentals. So to get this started, here are a few of the features I'd like to start off with with regards to SOLIDWORKS Fundamentals and some of the new things in the 2014 release. One of the first things I want to get into is the new history folder in the Feature Manager. Also some enhancements to opening document copies. Um, the option to include toolbox components in Pack and Go. Also a new system option to update assembly graphics when a model is saved. And then lastly, the ability to dismiss all prompts for missing components in one shot. So let's jump right into it. One of the first things I want to get into is an enhancement in the feature manager. You'll see it here, the history folder. The history folder is just the last modifications that you've made to a particular file. So it just tracks them and the last modifications that you've made get added to this history folder. But if you're a lot like me and you're modifying the same features over and over, it just offers quick access to the recently modified features of that particular file. You'll see here I have a number of different features. These are just what's been modified lately. Right? Um, I can control how many features get listed here by right clicking the history folder and going to history options. I can set a maximum for the number of features I'd like to see in that history folder. You can also shut the folder on and off the same way you can shut off a lot of folders in SOLIDWORKS via the hide show tree items. Right? You'll see history folder here and an option to hide and also set it to automatic. But by default it is set to show and I think it is a useful feature just for those that are currently you know, modifying the same features over and over again. It just saves me from having to drag down into the tree and figure out where that particular feature is. It just captures the last couple modifications that I've made and allows me quick access to them. So that's the new history folder you'll see in SOLIDWORKS 2014. What I want to move on to next is an enhancement to opening document copies. And one of the things you'll notice in SOLIDWORKS 2014 is when you do a file save as, you're going to see a new option to save as copy and open. And what happened in the past is if you did a save as copy, you had to do a save as copy, save the file, close what you're actively working on, and then open the copy. And this really just automates that process. So now instead of you know, saving the file, closing the active document, and opening the copy, you have this option to save as copy and open, which of course does that for you automatically. Now you can also click save as copy and continue, which would behave similar to previous versions. And if you do that, you'll see the same options in the save as dialog in general. You'll see here save as copy and open. So you'll see it in the prompt there, you'll also see it in the save as dialog, and it just gives you a little bit more flexibility, it just saves the time of having to do that save, close active document, and then open up the copy. So that's the new save as, copy, and, o uh, and open. What I want to get into next is an enhancement to toolbox, and in particular pack and go. When you pack and go a particular file set that has toolbox components, in the past it never included them. And the logic behind this was, well, the user that opens your assembly will have toolbox also, and it will locate those configurations and populate automatically. If you want, in the 2014 release, you can include toolbox components in pack and go. Okay. You'll see a new option in the file pack and go menu to include toolbox components. Once you check that option, of course, it adds all your toolbox components to the list to be saved, and they will be saved as separate files to whatever folder you specify in Pack and Go. Okay. The big benefit here is, of course, if I don't have the toolbox sizes, or if the person I'm sending this to doesn't have the toolbox sizes, that it will automatically find the referenced files and load them without any issues. So again, the new Include Toolbox Components option in the pack and go menu. The next enhancement I want to get into um, with regards to assemblies is the option to update assembly graphics in my system options next to perform excuse me assemblies 
you'll see an option here to update model graphics when saving files. And all this will do is update the display list data that's associated with components in an assembly. So if I open up a part in an or a part and I make a modification, when I save and close that file, it'll push the change to any assemblies that may be referencing that component so that the views the display list data just isn't out of date. Um, so again, it's just a system options, it's under assemblies, you'll see it update model graphics when saving files and it just updates the graphics um, with the assemblies when you make a modifications to components that are referencing that assembly. Okay, so new system option, update model graphics when saving files. The last one I want to get into before we jump back is an enhancement to dismissing uh, components. So, so when you open an assembly up and you have a, a series of components that are missing, right? Uh, you'll generally see a dialog, let me call it up here, that looks very similar to this. Okay, it, the assembly load, but then you'll get something similar to this. I'm not able to locate file. What would you like to do? And you have the options to browse or suppress. Well, in previous versions, you could browse, of course, and you could suppress, but you didn't have the option to suppress all missing components. Uh, and so this just saves you or gives you a little bit more control over whether you're suppressing an individual component or you just want to suppress all of them in one shot. Right? So again, the big deal here is it just allows me individual control whether I'm suppressing just this one part or all components in this assembly um, in one shot. And this is the new option here, suppress all missing components components. And again, you'll get this anytime you open an assembly and the file references, the component references are missing. Right? The, it's unable to locate specific files. And I think this will save those um, that generally in 2013 in previous versions would open up an assembly uh, and then they would have several missing files and then it inevitably check don't show again because they got tired of getting the prompt for the missing files. So again, individual control, the ability to dismiss or suppress all the missing components, dismiss this prompt all in one, in one shot. So with that, let's jump back to the PowerPoint and move on to the next set of features. So jumping to the next slide, I want to get into some more features in SolidWorks Fundamentals and the SolidWorks 2014 release. And probably one of the biggest features for SOLIDWORKS Fundamentals in the 2014 release, at least for me, is the enhancements to recent documents, which I'm going to get into detail in just a moment. Um, we've also added support for 2013 AutoCAD files, DXF import and export of DXF and DWG files for the 2013 AutoCAD release, right, version support. Um, we've also added the ability to save SOLIDWORKS files as PNG files, Portable Network graphics files, which is a very popular format uh, of image file. And then lastly, I want to get into some of the enhancements to equations, in particular configurable equations. But let's start off with the enhancements to recent docs, which is definitely worth pointing out. Now, recent docs, of course, is not new, um, but some of the enhancements are really worth mentioning in the 2014 release. So here's the recent doc menu. I just call it up with the R key and the keyboard. But one of the first things you'll notice in 2014 is this set of arrows in the bottom right corner. As I mouse over an icon, you'll see these arrows, and if I click on them, I get an expanded menu set, right? an expanded tile to select some options for opening this particular component. And we really didn't have control over this before, but now I can specify whether I want to open or open read only. Right? I can specify whether I want to load resolved or lightweight or a particular configuration or display state. I can even view the references right from the recent dialog box. So just some additional options for opening files from the recent docs. And again, it's all accessible with the arrow you'll see in the bottom right corner as you mouse over a particular tile. Now for me, one of the neatest things and the, the neatest enhancements to recent docs is the ability to drag and drop these tiles right into my file. So I can drag this, for instance, right into my assembly. Okay? And a lot of other users do this different ways, maybe with Windows Explorer or so on, but now you can do it right from the recent docs list. So again, all I'm doing is dragging and dropping a component, a tile from recent docs right into my assembly. Okay. So it definitely a popular workflow. I think a lot of people like the enhancement, the ability to drag and drop into the assembly. Uh, just makes it a simple method 
uh, for inserting parts into your assembly. It's not just for inserting parts into assembly though, it also works for derived components. So if I want to insert a part into a part, uh, the recent docs work for that as well. Also, kind of nice I found with this is support for drawing. So if I just build a new drawing here, I'm just going to start a blank drawing. I could do the same thing in drawing. So I go recent docs, I drag a part right into my drawing. As soon as I let go, I get a prompt for what view I want. Right, I'm just going to choose a front view, hit OK, and there there's a front view of that part in my drawing. So again, the drag and drop, not just applicable to assemblies, but also parts and drawings. And what I've found, this one's actually kind of neat too, is I can actually take this from recent docs, drag it into, for instance, my desktop, into Windows Explorer in general. So I can take from recent docs and drag into Windows Explorer and make a copy. So it's another way of copying a file as well, the drag of the tile from the recent docs folder. So those are some of the enhancements to recent docs. Let's jump back to the PowerPoint here. Now for version support, in previous versions we did not support AutoCAD 2013 either for import or export, but now with the 2014 release of SOLIDWORKS we now support the import and export of AutoCAD 2013 DXF and DWG files. I don't really have any good examples of this, it's just one of those things that just now works. AutoCAD 2013 files, DXF or DWG, you can now import and export. The next one on the list, I, however, I do have a good example of, and I, I think that this is particularly useful for those trying to create um, good literature. Maybe I want to build some marketing and I like to be able to take screenshots of my CAD files uh, and save them, and that is support for PNG files. PNG files are a form of image file. Um, that is very popular for building literature and things like that. And the reason I bring this up is a lot of people were doing this in the past, but doing a lot of workarounds to accomplish it. And that is removing the background. You may notice the image that I have here in PowerPoint. You notice the background matches the PowerPoint template. Um, you would not get that with a JPEG, a bitmap, or so on. And so what makes PNG so popular is when you go to file save as a PNG file right it's just an option now under save as you'll see portable network graphics PNG is under options you will see an option here to remove background I really think that's what people are gonna like about the PNG format um, is it just saves me that additional step of having to go through a different software to remove that background and of course what you get is an image of the SOLIDWORKS window but without the background and so for things like for instance going back to my PowerPoint I uh, I want an image of the CAD file but I don't want the background the SOLIDWORKS background to show up in it a PNG file is a very good format for accomplishing this so that's the ability to save SOLIDWORKS files as PNG portable network graphics and you'll see it in the save as menu so that does it for part one of the SOLIDWORKS fundamentals CAD cast Join us for part two. We'll finish the remainder of the enhancements. For other CAD casts, visit us at youtube.com forward slash DDICAD or DDICAD.com forward slash tech center.